Hello, hello, and welcome to the Ball and All podcast. This is your daily Basketball Africa League recap. This is the Ball and All podcast does speaks about all things basketball. We talk about the NBA, the WNBA, and the Basketball Africa League, but we do a daily show for the Basketball Africa League. It is day nine uh, of the Basketball Africa League. The final games, final, the group games have finally been done, and we've gotten our playoff seeds our top eight playoff teams that will be spread out into the four quarterfinal matches single elimination semifinals and finals that will culminate in on sunday so we had the final two games that happened one last night one today um the last last night it was petro de luanda taking on air Sale, and today it was zamalek taking on gs petroleus i'll be covering both games but let me just give you a lay of the land at the top remember you can uh, follow me oh, my name is mpomutwani um, um, I am the host of the show. I'm from South Africa, and you can follow me on Mpomoreki at uh, on Instagram and on Twitter. You can also subscribe to the Ball and All channel on YouTube. Um, before we uh, carry on, let's just give you the lay of the land of the final fixtures. The final fixtures happened like this: Petro de Luanda last night took on uh, A.S. Sale in a massive clash for the top of Group B to be seated higher. Petro de Luanda won 97 uh, 78, and then the North African battle between Zamalek and GS Petroleus it just ended right now. Uh, with Zamalek winning 97 64 in that game, we're going to recap and talk about those games. That obviously gives us playoffs and uh, the final group standings that I'll talk about a little bit later on. But let's go on to the first game. Petro de Luanda taking on A.S. Saleh of Morocco. That was a really good game. I was, that was quite a, a, a highly anticipated game for myself. Um, largely for me to be able to see um, how Petro de Luanda play, on, uh, play with A.S. Saleh. Um, uh, obviously, as these were the two uh, form teams in Group B and the two teams that were leading Group B, and it was a test for Petro de Luanda, who I thought would be were favourites coming in. Um, obviously, as it went along, you kind of felt that uh, did Petro have a big game in them where they could blow a team away or or put close to a hundred points on a team, and they did that against uh, Sale. Uh, Sale are no jokes; they are a very strong uh, team, good at scoring threes. Um, good at, 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 at scoring buckets when they need to score buckets. And you saw that in the first quarter when they led by 14 um, in the first quarter. Um, uh, uh, but then Petro de Luanda, who seemingly started slowly, uh, started getting back into the game and they started um, dominating uh, the areas where they needed to dominate, i.e. inside the paint um, with uh, with Joaquim, with Jone Pedro, um, and also there's some really good shooting from Olympia Cipriano. Um, Jone Pedro, who was uh, MVP of the first game, he scored a double-double, 11 points and 10 rebounds. Carlos Moraes, who hasn't had the best of tournaments, he came out with 13 points and 6 rebounds. Uh, Vander, uh, number 41, uh, Joaquin, um, he scored 10 points. He was 57.3 uh, for the uh, for the center. He reminds me of Marcus Gasol. He hangs around the, the the perimeter and he's not willing. He's not. He's not shy to take a shot. And and it's not even heat checks where you just check if you if you still got the range. He literally drops the ball in and 50% from three is really good. For his 10 points. Olympia Cipriano coming off the bench was just sensational. He is a sharpshooter for this uh Petro de Luanda side, and he just showed it. Um, he's done it all see all, all tournament long with his threes. When it seems like Petro de Luanda scoring is seemingly fading uh with the bench, he is their scorer off the bench, and he did well. He scored 17 points, 62% from three, five from eight, which is really, really, really good uh to watch and exciting. But the man, the MVP. Uh, the second, well, for the second time, Mr. Ryan Richards, the the center coming off the bench, he scored 19 points. He had four, three from four from three. Uh, that's a uh, 75%. And he also had uh, six, uh, six for ten, six from ten from the free throw line, 60%. Really good. He was a game changer for this uh, Petro de Luanda with ISL because towards halftime you kind of felt that both teams were in it. Midway through the third quarter, you thought teams were in it, but then somehow they pulled away. It was Ryan Richards or Cipriano who just pulled this game away uh, from A.S. Saleh. Um, if you look at um, uh, Petro de Luanda, they had 50 bench points in that 97, which says a lot about the guys coming off. We had Cipriano, you had Richards coming off the bench. Um, they had 27 fast break points, which was the key, I think, in this game. They just 
the transition defense from ASL was really wasn't that great. They weren't getting back on defense, and it was just easy for Petro de Luanda to move from one gear to the other, either through a long ball or a set of two passes, or even to a certain extent with if with when defenders are following them, they'd be able to find the man, the open man on the low block, um, try getting ready to to for, for the easy buckets. So that was good. Um, and also the disappointing thing from Air Salah, 33 points conceded off turnovers. That has to change if they're going to go into the playoffs. And I'll tell you why. Because we don't have the schedule for the playoffs yet, but I'll tell you why. I think it's going to be quite important. Um, on Air Salah's side, Rashad James um, with 22 points and 12 rebounds. Terrell Stoglin, 25 points. Um, he was uh, 38% from the field, so he wasn't having the greatest of shooting nights like he had before. Remember, he scored a 40-piece earlier on in the tournament, um, but he scored 90% from his free throws. Rashad James was 64% free, uh, from field goal percentage. He was really good, just wasn't good enough. And I think what Air Sally will be ruining is the fact that they just kept on turning the ball over and they couldn't make stops when they needed to. And that's going to be quite important in the playoffs when rosters shrink and 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 every basket, every possession matters, um, which is going to be quite um, important. The next game uh, was uh, Zamalek um, and GS Petroleus, and that was the final game. Remember that game was was postponed uh, due to the league's health and safety protocols, and they were willing to play it. To, they were they managed to play it today, a day after the normal regular season was supposed to end. Yeah, Zamalek just were just quality. Quality, quality against a side who struggled throughout the tournament, a side who lost their uh, number one point score in the first game, Mohamed Haraharat of Algeria, the MVP of the Saudi Arabian League, scored 28 points, and he ended up not playing because he had a muscle strain for the last two games, which was disappointing for GSP, and he probably could have been a game changer for them. But Zamalek today were good on both ends of the court. They were really good at defense. They they have this moment where um, they surprise you with full court, uh, with a full court press, which is which is which is interesting because you haven't seen that in the tournament yet, where where teams have periods where they want to lock you down, and then they will just surprise you with with, with defense, which is something was which is something that was really really awesome to see um, from 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 that perspective. Um, how 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 a great defensive team just works, um, and and they were good on the other end. Um, um, Mustafa Mohamed Al Makawi was just on point. He's the MVP of the game. 19 points, 11 rebounds, a double double, 77% from inside the three point line. That was just really good to see. He was just picking up everything offensive rebounds. He was putting them away, getting some, some, some really nice, being on the back end of some really nice dishes was um, from him. That was re- uh, well to him. That was really good. Um, the, the other problem with GSP, um, they considered 27 points of turnovers. Um, which is something that if you're going to concede that amount, you already are on a hiding to nothing. And that was just really sad. 38 points from fast breaks compared to five. It's GSP just were not getting back on defense. And 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 having guys like Abdel Atif, the number two, who's 18 years old, who's just willing to go coast to coast and run without the ball and, and do some great off-ball movement. Um, he was it it, it kind of helped Zamalek take charge of the of the slowish defense from GSP trying to get back on 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 defense in in transition. Um Abdel Latif is 18 years old, possibly a a, a draft prospect this year. Um I, I'm not too sure if 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 he'll he'll get it but the off season starting there are some NBA scouts. I think he'd be very good um for a side he's a really good shooter. He's really good with defense especially from a guard um and and to a certain extent for the young guards in in, in the NBA. Um defense is is, is what you need to to have because if you have defense, the other part of the game will come to you. So that was that was good to see. Um, Zamalek had sixty points in the paint. That's just how dominant they were with Mohammed Anas uh, Anas Mahmoud, um, who scored uh, Mah- uh, yeah, Mahmoud scored a, a thirteen points, 85 percent from the field. Um, that's he literally missed one shot. It was six from seven. Uh, Walter Hodge, he's their guard. He scored twelve um, points and seven rebounds and four assists. But it was just being able to feed the big men inside the middle, inside the key, and and having them just put points up. And that was just disappointing from GSP, who lose all three of their games and go home not having won a game. But Zamalek move on. The train moves on. Nobody knows who they play yet, but I will give you a sense of of what I think will happen uh, in the playoffs. I've seeded all of them based on uh, points differential and how many games and how many points they've received. 
Um, and then we'll talk about that as we go along. But let's look at the groups um, to get you through. Let me just get that out the way. Um, so essentially, the final team, uh, GSP needed to win by 12 points in order to pip uh, AS Duanes for that final spot. So if you look at Group A, you've got Monastir, um, who are the best team in terms of points differential in the tournament. Um, they got they won all three of their games, 92-plus points differential. Patriots qualifying as the runners-up in Group A. Um, Rivers Hoopers obviously couldn't. You could see that they had a negative 41 uh, points difference, which needed to be to uh, to be bettered or or, or or worsened by another team for them to make it in. And then in Group B, you've got Petro de Luanda, you've got AS Sale, and you've got FAP as the first of the third best uh, of the two third-placed teams. Um, they've made it through. Um, and then Zamalek having won all their games, Ferra Viario having won two of the games and losing to Zamalek um, qualifies runners-up. And then as do one is qualify in Group C as the uh, the second uh, third uh, second best third place finisher. FAP were one of them, and 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 for uh, and as do one is were the other. So that is the teams that have qualified for the playoffs, and that's how the groups looked at the end of the regular season in the Basketball Africa League, the inaugural Basketball Africa League. Now let's just look at the uh, playoffs. Um, so the BLA, BAL playoffs will start on the 26th and the 27th of May with the quarterfinals. Uh, they've moved them a day. They're supposed to start tomorrow. They've moved them one day back with the semifinals happening after a rest day on uh, on Saturday. And then the third and fourth place playoff match happening on uh, on, 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 on Sunday. Um, and then after that, the final will uh, take a place so that's th those are the ba those are the dates the revised dates for the playoffs now let's look at the playoff seeding so the best team in the in the in the in the uh, so we've got our eight teams and this is how they are as you can see them there so monastir have won all three of their games uh with a plus 92 points difference so they get the number one seed um, Zamalek gets the number two seed with a plus 73 points difference, having won all three of their games. Um, and then the third team, um, and the Zamalek coming obviously out of a uh, group a C, um, Monastir coming out of group A. And then the group B winners, Petro de Luanda, um, uh, getting uh, winning all three of their games, but with a 39 uh, points difference, a plus 39 points difference. They, um, and then the fourth best team, which is the second, the first best runner up are the Patriots of Rwanda. Uh, they have won two of their games with a plus 13 points difference. Ferra Viario Vier, of Maputo um, with uh, two wins as well as, as Patriots with an 11 points difference. They, they're in fifth. In sixth, you've got A.S. Sale with two wins uh, with a negative seven points difference coming out of Group B. And then um, in the last two spots, those uh, two spots that were reserved for the uh, two uh, third, uh, the the sec the two best third place finishers, which is FAP and AS Duanes. FAP with a uh, a points difference of plus seventeen, having only won one of their matches, and AS Duanes of Senegal, um, having won one of their matches with a minus twenty uh, points difference. So what I think will happen is, and these are the fixtures I think will happen for the quarterfinals. One will play eight. So U.S. Monastir of Tunisia will play A.S. Duanes of Senegal. This is obviously going to be confirmed by the BAL. Two will play seven. So Zamalek will play FAP um, in, 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 in a quarterfinal. So Group C playing Group B. Uh, Monastir is Group A playing the, 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 the number three from Group C. Then uh, Petro de Luanda will have a rematch like on Saturday against A.S. Sale um, in the one quarterfinal with three playing six. And then Patriots of Rwanda playing Ferra Viario de Maputo in the other semi, uh, in the other quarterfinal within the winners of the one and eight matchup playing the, 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 the winners of the four and five matchup, as you can see right there, with the uh, winners of the two, three matchup. Uh, playing the, uh, the the two seven matchup, playing the winners of the three six matchup. So you could potentially get a Zamalek Petro de Luanda semi final with a US Monastir against either Patriots or Ferra Viario of Maputo. They're going into these playoffs. It's going to be very exciting. 
Um, and I'm looking forward uh, to these playoffs. I think uh, Amadou Gala 4 with the NBA Africa team and the FIBA team and all the guys who've managed to make this work with all the sponsorships. I'm loving the three for trees. Uh, I'm loving the fact that they've given uh, some teachers laptops over the weekend. Um, and that's, that's what we want. We just want to keep showing and showcasing African, African basketball and also making sure that... Um, um, the talent that we have on the continent is nurtured well from all the way from basketball without borders all the way to the BAL and possibly to other parts of the continent. But we want to keep our stars here. Uh, we want our best stars to be playing in the best leagues in the world, but we also want the BAL to become one of the best leagues in the world. And so far, this has lived up to every expectation I have had, and I hope it has lived up to every expectation you have had. So I will be, I'll be back um, probably either um, on Wednesday to talk about the start of the playoffs um, as we go uh, through it all. If uh, we're just waiting on confirmation on the, from the BAL as to what the fixtures are, so we'll find that out tomorrow. If it does happen, I'll probably do a, a playoff preview tomorrow to just give you a sense of what to expect um, coming up in the next uh, couple of days. Uh, well, so enjoy the rest day tomorrow. There's no basketball, so that's going to be a little bit sad. But uh, we'll be back again with another daily recap, just giving you a bit of a playoff preview once those fixtures are out. So for myself and Paul uh, Mutwani, uh, please do follow me on Instagram and Twitter and also like and subscribe to the channel. For myself and Paul, uh, have a good evening and have a good night. Um, we'll chat soon in the next couple of days. Goodbye.